Now here at Zig Wheels Philippines, we love reviewing performance cars or even cars that are a little bit sporty. But those are not the best sellers, really. If you look at the best selling cars in the Philippines, they're mostly family cars, small sedans and MPVs. And that's exactly what we have right here. What's going on guys? Roy Robles here from ZigWheels.ph and here's the MPV you've all been waiting for or you thought you didn't know you wanted. It's the Nissan Lavina. Alright, so what we got right here is the top of the line VL model, which is of course the Lavina with all the bells and whistles on it. Now before we begin talking about the exterior, I'm going to say this once and I'm not going to say it again. Yes, it definitely looks like the Expander because these two cars share one platform. It's part of Nissan, Mitsubishi and Renault's Global Alliance and that's what we have right here. Up front right here, instead of having that old familiar look on the Expander, you've got this V-Motion grille with these V-shaped grille right here. It's all decked out in chrome and your large Nissan badge right in the middle. Now, I gotta say, the V-Motion grille actually looks on this car a lot better than the other car. Now, right below right here, you've got a trim that's decked in a silver color, plus you've got those fog lamps right below. Now, the only thing I don't like though about the top of the line Lavina is that sure, you've got LED DRLs, but everything about it, the headlamps, the fog lamps, they're all halogen. At least it creates some sort of contrast color, especially at night. But having LEDs really gives it that top of the line look, which this is supposed to be. You got a short hood right here and everything seems to be nice and streamlined. But let's take a look around it so that I can show you a few more details of the Nissan Lavina. Now heading over to the side profile of the Nissan Lavina, you'd notice this crossover SUV kind of look. You got 205 millimeters of ground clearance. Again, those 16 inch alloy wheels. Plus having the VL variant, you've got that silver trim right below as well. These chrome doors, the chrome side mirrors, which I think kind of look kind of tacky, but a lot of people seem to like that look, not for me. Now you've got this floating roof design because you've got this blacked out portion in the deep pillar. It does have interesting body lines in the side profile though. This one in particular shaped like an arrow. Now it's a clean overall look which really won't offend a lot of people on the road which is definitely what you want in a family MPV. Now, of course right here in the rear of the Lavina you've got what seems to be a really familiar back end. You got these L-shaped tail lamps right here but instead of having those L-shaped light bars from the expander, you got these tuning fork shaped ones. The tail lamps are actually an LED, but once you hit the brakes, the brake lamps are still definitely halogen. It's much flatter. It gives it a more spacious look from the outside at least. Plus right here below, you got these finishers right here. It's pretty much split in the middle right there, but you actually give it a more sportier vibe. Now the lift gate isn't power operated, but it's easy to open. And once you do, gives you access to all this space. Now, as you can see, it is a seven seater MPV, but even with the third row seats straight up, you still have a lot of room to work with. Plus, if you lift this right here, you got these three compartments, which are really interesting and I like. And if you don't need those third row seats, you can always fold these seats down. And if you need even more space, you can fold those second row seats down as well. All right, so that's what we have on the exterior of the Nissan Lavina. Let's check out the inside. All right, so we're inside the Nissan Lavina. The first thing that you would notice is that you won't find any frills, any fancy amenities right here. That will make it even more, you know, fancier than it actually is. Well, oh, hey, you can actually find some wooden trims right here in the dash as well. Here's the door panels but they're so dark that you wouldn't even notice them. You've got your seven inch touchscreen infotainment system right here, which unfortunately does not have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. For your Titas and Titas out there, you even have a CD slot right here. And if you, you, you grew up in the early 2000s, you could probably use that as, I don't know. <laughs> How would you use that? I don't know. When was the last time you've seen a CD? So it has six speakers. But those six speakers, if you bump up the volume high enough, it's going to sound kind of broken, which you're not supposed to do anyway, especially if you've got kids here in the back. So yeah, keep your volumes down as much as you can and you'll be fine. No worries. So the steering wheel, the steering wheel. Oh, here you go. You've gone. You've found your 
first sense that you've got at least some soft touch materials on it. You've got this leather wrap steering wheel and you've got piano black. Oh my goodness, piano black on the steering wheel. You should never put it there. You shouldn't actually have piano black at all inside the car, but having that on the steering wheel makes it even worse. But at least the steering wheel is adjustable for both reach and rake. So finding your optimum driving position might be possible, but unfortunately the seats are not power operated. The manual air conditioning system though, they have this interesting knob there. Speaking of knobs, this touchscreen infotainment system though does not have a volume knob to it. It's gonna be hard for you to change the volume right here, change the stations. Luckily you do have this button right here on the steering wheel to do so, but if your passenger wants to change it themselves, they're gonna to have to deal with this capacitive button. All right. Now, I want to go back to this touchscreen infotainment system, though. It's got this weird icons to it. It kind of looks very 90s or early 2000s if you're using the old, just old Windows laptops. I wish that they had flatter icons for designs, but again, it is what it is. The gauge clusters, though, they're analog gauge clusters. At least you've got that temperature gauge, which a lot of the cars these days seem to be omitting and they have the temperature gauge. I like how they included the start stop button right here. You got one solitary USB port right here at the bottom, two if you count the USB port right here on the touchscreen infotainment system, but that's only for data transfer and will not charge your phone as fast as you want to. At least you got a 12 volt socket right here. I wish it had more USB ports. I can definitely see a family road trip where people will be fighting for that last bit of USB ports just to charge their device, I wish it had more. There's no center armrest to speak of, so driving long distances would be a pain, especially for me, I need that center armrest. But at least it's got this really deep cubby hole, and I lost my hand down there. All right, so let's go ahead and check out the second and third row seats after I do a little space expedition to find my, uh, my hand. All right, so here are the second row seats. I find myself getting a lot of space. So it's a lot of space for my knees, my legs, my feet here. And I'm sitting behind what's, what seems to be my optimum driving position and then some. You got a pretty shallow center tunnel around below. So you got the second row AC vents right here. Plus the windows are really large. It doesn't give me that claustrophobic feeling, especially when sitting in the second row. But the question is, can I fit in the third row with this configuration? Let's find out. All right, so in order to get to the third row seats, you have to tumble forward the second row. I'd like to take this opportunity to show you guys how adjustable the second row seats are. You can actually slide these forward and back, depending on the height of the passengers in the back. All right, so to do get in the third row seats, you tumble this forward like so, giving you all this space right here. And I gotta get my fat ass inside. All right. Oh, ho. hey, wait, let me just recline this a bit. Yeah. All right, the third row seats are not made for people of my size. <laughs> I'm five foot ten and a half, and at this height, your knees would be banging against the second row. But like I said, those second row seats actually slide forward. Like so, all right? So you gotta ask nicely the second row passengers to at least adjust it a little bit. And once you do so, uh, <laughs> at least I got more room for my legs here, but back support is not there at all. All right, so this is definitely meant for uh, people of smaller stature, but given the average size of Filipinos, this will definitely work. But that's enough about how these seats work. Let's see how this thing drives. All right, so now we're behind the wheel. Uh, sorry, it's getting a little bit noisy here. Anyway, we're behind the wheel of the Nissan Levina. Under the hood, you've got a four cylinder, 1.5 liter naturally aspirated engine. It makes 105 horsepower and 141 newton meters of torque. Now, this is no sports car or does it have any aspirations to become one? If they want to do, they can probably call this the Nissan Levina and Sport Sporty Package. But I asked Nissan if they're ever gonna introduce some sort of model or accessories to give it that uh, sporty aspiration. But they told us, no, it's, it is what it is. Probably they could plan about it, but not right now. So what that actually means that this is definitely a family car through and through. It 
actually complains if you want it to go as fast as it can. I mean, it's got a four-speed automatic with overdrive. So do you really want it to go as fast as you want it to be? Steering is very, uh, well, steering is vague, of course. Again, this is, this is an MPV, a crossover MPV. So you're not going to expect this to canyon carve anytime soon. Being a family car, you got this high roof line and greenhouse so you definitely have a lot of visibility i like how the a pillars give you that extended look it has this extended window right here it really cancels out a lot of the blind spots in this car which i really appreciate actually because this is definitely something that you don't want to drive aggressively suspension we're talking about mcpherson struts up front and a torsion bar rear suspension so that means it optimizes the space without sacrificing a lot of the uh, comfort but steering again and handling is definitely big you can feel a lot of the body roll especially with doing sharp corners like that that's a sign that you're not going to use this as a drift machine it is not it's a family car and nissan knows that all right safety features it's standard it's basic Two airbags up front, ABS or the electronic brake force distribution. It's got a backup camera and it also has backup sensors. So in this top of the line model, you've got the backup camera and backing sensors. It's as part of Nissan's intelligent mobility, of course, but that's as far as it's gonna get when it comes to Nissan intelligent mobility. You don't get active driver assist. The expectations of this car is very sedate, but Again, they know their market. Not everyone, believe it or not, 95, even 99% of car owners are not car guys or car girls. All they want is a you know, regular drive. So what does Nissan's audience or this car's audience want? They want space. And of course, fuel economy. Fuel economy for the Nissan Livina. That's about nine kilometers per liter in the city and 16 kilometers per liter on the highway. And with those fuel economy numbers, you can definitely you know, save on a lot of money, especially with high gas prices these days. Speaking of saving, let's talk about the price. Pricing for the Nissan Livina starts at 1,029,000 pesos for the, uh, yeah, for the entry level model with a manual transmission. You don't get as much as of the uh, exterior in ICTs that I discussed earlier, but what you get is a basic seven seater MPV. That is what it is. If you want to move up, of course, to the top of the line model, which is this one, yeah, you'll definitely have to spend uh, 1,209,000 pesos. Now, let's talk brass tacks. Here's what someone who would buy this kind of car thinks whenever they choose, whenever they choose their car. Can it fit seven people? Uh, I've always received that question. Can this car seat seven people? Is it enough to get to Baguio, bring all their stuff in it? If you ask me all those questions about the Nissan Livina, yes, you can definitely tick all those boxes. I mean, it can get to Baguio, but probably not as quick as some of those turbocharged crossover vehicles out there. But here's what Nissan can promise. Nissan actually offers the Nissan Livina with a five-year warranty or 150,000 kilometers, whichever comes first. And that adds up to more, even more savings. If you think about what the Nissan Livina has to offer, it definitely gives you a lot of things to think about, especially at this price point, at this segment. So if you're asking me, can this do whatever you need it to be or need it to do? The answer is yes. Live in la vida loca. So that's our review of the Nissan Livina. I think it might be one of those types of cars that's definitely strictly a family car, unless of course you deck it out, which you shouldn't. <laughs> it's definitely a family car, guys. But before I give you my final thoughts, here are three things I don't like about it and three things I love about this MPV. All right, so the first thing that I find iffy about the Nissan Livina, of course, it is a top of the line model. It's the VL model, but the exterior might do a little bit more work. It could use bigger wheels. It could use LED headlamps or brake lamps. I just think that for the price, it could offer a little bit more. 
The second thing I don't like about the Nissan Lavina is, of course, the safety features. Now, you've got dual airbags, you've got ABS with electronic brake force distribution, sure, but most cars these days offer a lot more than just that. There's like 360 degree cameras, you've got active driver assist systems, which this one does not have. At least it could get a little bit few more airbags than the two ones at the front. That's just my two cents. And the third thing I don't like about the Nissan Lavina are the interior amenities. Come on, seven inch touchscreen infotainment system that's kind of laggy, but and you could use some Android Auto and Apple CarPlay in it. At least it's got Bluetooth, but once you connect your phone via Bluetooth, the six speakers can barely hold off the interior amenities. Plus it could use a little bit more USB ports inside. Sure, it's got a 12 volt socket in the back, but I can definitely see your family fighting over the limited number of USB ports just to charge the devices. Now we've got all the negatives out of the way, here are three things I love about the Nissan Lavina. Now the first thing I love about the Nissan Lavina is Nissan's take on this classic body style. I mean that V-Motion grille right up front really blends well with this body style and definitely gives it a more distinct and unique look, especially when going down the road. The second thing I love about the Nissan Lavina is all the space inside. It's an unapologetically MPV family car that you're definitely not going to mistake in for a sporty car at all. Plus those leather seats really up the ante, especially for people sitting inside. So if you want to bring seven people, they can definitely fit in the Nissan Lavina. The third thing I love about this is the fuel economy. Being powered by a 1.5 liter naturally aspirated engine plus having that good old classic 4-speed automatic gives you great fuel economy especially in the city and even more so on the highway. So there you have it folks, that is our review of the Nissan Lavina. What do you think? Do you think that you can go ahead and spend your hard earned money on something like this? Drop me a comment in the comment section down below and while you're at it, subscribe to your channel and hit that notification icon so you wouldn't miss any of our videos. Thanks so much for watching. This is Roy Robles from Zigwheels.ph and I'll see you guys next time.